Hey everyone, it's Dave for Gamers on Games. Um, I don't have a script here. I don't have anything really prepared, so this is going to be all very off the cuff. Um, I realize at this point, many of you who are watching have already voted. And you voted whichever way you were going to vote. You either voted for Harris, you voted for Trump, you voted for Stein, I guess, or whoever it might have been. But I'm sure there are still some who are either getting ready to go to the polls tomorrow um, or are uh, still undecided and it's the way it may be. If you're one of my regulars, you've seen me do reviews of games, do playthroughs of games, do assessment of games. And you know that I try to be as fair and objective as possible when I do my evaluations, when I give you guys my thoughts on these various games and products when it comes to the election and it comes to the candidates it's the same but here's the thing i realize it all comes down to opinion but the opinion's got to be rooted in something and here's the thing when it was biden versus trump i was very vocal i said i was very concerned you know biden had done a lot of good but the problem is, is i was concerned about his health, I was concerned about his energy level, his ability to keep up with the job. Harris stepping in changed that for me, okay? Uh, she's younger, she seems more spry, definitely more have a much higher energy level. Trump, on the other hand, as this whole season has gone on, his energy level, his mental state, all of it has deteriorated. He seems to be struggling to find his thoughts more often. He's rambling more. I know he's trying to cover it up with this whole weave thing. But it's that and it's anger. It is nothing but spite and grievance and anger. And the thing that kills me when I watch his rallies, because, yeah, even, even I'm watching his rallies, is... um. There's, there's this weird excuse that's being given for him. There's all this leniency that's just somehow accepted for him. However, that leniency did not extend to Biden. But the way that that leniency has also translated into permission for all the hate. I mean, we have seen immense amounts of hate. Things he plans to do to people in this country. And this is on top of the things he's already done. I am terrified. Having seen what he has already done. With his last term. And what the potential for another term will mean. And I'm not even terrified really for myself. I'm terrified for my child. I am terrified for my extended family. My friends. And those who are, um, those, those of you who follow me and I interact with online because I have a large group of LGBTQ individuals, a large group of Middle Eastern individuals, and a large group of just straight up women. And all of you have been amazingly supportive of me. So it is my turn to return the favor. And I have spoken out about lots of different things. I have talked about discrimination in the gaming industry. I have talked about um, the hate in the industry. I've talked about the hobby and its toxicity. And outside of that, we've even talked about simple things like human rights in the face of genocidal acts by... American allies. In this case, I do mean the whole Israel Gaza thing. We have discussed it. We have talked about it. Some of you have, uh, you know, expressed a, uh, a a sympathy or commiseration with my point of view. Some of you have actually said, "Nope, I'm out," and that's fine. Listen, there's a certain point where I understand we're going to disagree. But here's the thing. When I see policies 
that are not only going to impact my kid, but potentially destroy my kid? I mean, that brings it all home, for me at least. Yes, I do care about my my, uh, viewers. Yes, I do care about my extended family. But when it all comes down to my child, it all changes. Knowing that she, under a Trump administration, is going to have no rights to her own body, guts me. I have never felt so terrified and hollow as when Roe was overturned. And I've talked about this previously, but I'm going to bring this up again. When I found out that I was going to be a father, I was exhilarated. I was beside myself. I was like, yes, this is something I've always wanted. I, I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be a great parent. I'm going to, I'm going to do everything I can. I want to give this kid a better upbringing than I had. I still stand by that. And then we did, we found out the gender. No, actually, in that case, it's the biological sex. We found out the biological sex. <clears throat> and they're like, well, what do you see? I'm looking at it, and I've never read an ultrasound in my life. I'm like, I don't know, boy. They're like, nope, that's a girl. And I was simultaneously exhilarated and terrified. And the sad part is, is I was not terrified because, oh, my God, you know, I, I, I don't know anything about raising a daughter. I don't know, none of that. The first thing sprung into my mind was statistics of sexual violence against women and I think I'm a little bit unique in that of having that spring of mind because I am also a survivor and I've discussed that in previous episodes as well knowing that I was going to have a child that is going to be vulnerable to violence And the repercussions of that violence, it hit me. And I started literally trying to batten down the hatches mentally of, okay, statistically speaking, this isn't a probability, this is going to happen. You know? So I started trying to get my head around that, and that sucked. But it gets worse. Because not only did my head have to get around that, But then when Roe v. Wade happened and that got overturned, it it got so much worse because now I'm like, oh, my God, not only is this statistically an inevitability, but when it does, she is going to get violated twice. The initial attack and then after that, she is not going to have control with what happens to her own body. And that is uh, unconscionable. It's immoral. And I, I don't know how else to span. So, so here's the thing. People were like, oh, yeah, well, what did Harris do? What did Harris do? Harris has been a VP. Stop acting like Harris has been the president. Harris is not the president. Harris has done what she could do from a VP position. Mostly be a mouthpiece for Biden. Kind of all she really can do. She's, you know, pushed some policies and whatnot. But mostly she's a mouthpiece. That being said, her commitment to undoing the Roe v. Wade overturning the Dobbs decision is more than enough for me to get my vote. Because Trump isn't going to do it. Trump has done everything he can to dodge the question. He still won't concede that he lost the last election. He has done everything he can to elevate those who committed violence in his name, including talking about pardoning them. He has changed the national anthem to the J6 choir. They no longer have the the American flag at his rallies, it is now the American flag with his name, his likeness, or otherwise defaced, carried around. When they went to the Capitol on J6, January 6th, they didn't bring the American flag. They brought the Confederate flag, and they brought Trump flags. 
Keep that in mind. So when everyone tells you, oh, it's just a matter of opinion, it's not. He's talked about camps and very Nazi-like and concentration camp-oriented policies. Um, he has talked about uh, enacting things in accordance with uh, uh, Project 2025, though he then distanced himself from that, and this is also something we talked about, he distanced himself from that, so that he has plausible deniability, so he hoped that he gets back a couple voters from that, even though the people who wrote, J uh, wrote the Project 2025 document the Heritage Foundation have said, we understand he's going to need to distance himself so he can get elected, but don't worry, he's still going to do it. So, all this being said, understand why I vote the way I do, and understand what that's going to mean. Now, to one specific person who I know is watching, because I know you're still watching, buddy. Um, your desire to cut off contact, and also when I asked you who you were going to vote for, and you were like, well, that's not my, that's not my need to know. It told me so much about where your voting is going to be at, and why I don't think this would ever work again. And it sucks. It really does. But the fact that you are willing to vote to hurt my kid, I cannot abide by. I'm sure you have some sort of moral high horse you're going to be on. And that's fine. You be on your high horse. And you can talk about your how your high horse is going to crap all over me and blah, 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 blah. Your vote is definitively against my kid's well-being. And I'm sorry, I can't somehow square that circle. I have no ill will against you, but I'm not going to put myself through mental gymnastics to try to reconcile when you have told me in our conversation, your cutting of contact, and your inability to be straightforward with me. That my kid's life and well-being means absolutely nothing to you. And that is upsetting and sad. But that's a you problem. That is you, not me. Wishing you all the best. But I sincerely hope that your candidate loses. That being said, I'm going to end this here. I wish everybody safe voting. If you are going to go vote tomorrow, um, be safe, be well. Please treat others at the polling locations with respect. I guess that's it. I guess after this, we just find out whether or not I get to stay in the country or if I have to flee.